What's up, guys? Due to the pandemic, the clubs are closed and gatherings are prohibited. So ping pong robots are becoming popular. And if you plan to train with the robot, you need to know a few things so that you get the most out of your robot training. Before we get into the specifics, here is a disclaimer. Mm. I recommend getting a private lesson from a coach rather than using a robot to train. What are you talking about? Because simply I believe that investing in private lessons is more beneficial. For sure, you will improve faster. And that's why most of the players get a coach inside of the machine. But at a time like this, we don't have much option but to find a way to play at home. And training with a robot can be tricky because while you can get some exercise, you may build unnecessary habits without even knowing them and take more time to break and fix the forms later in the future. Today, my assistant will be an Emeka's Prime robot. She is one of the most advanced robots that you may get, but most of the robots in the market will be enough to perform the drills that you want to train. So, here is the list of the things that I recommend you to remember when you train with a robot. Number one, the setting. Number two, move, move. Number three, no new technique. Number four, you ain't a robot. Number five, target. Number one, the settings. When you are beginner and new to the robot, you might just go on and use the default mode on the program. But you really need to know how to set the feeding so that the ball's height, spin, speed, placement, and etc. are as if a coach is feeding you. This is really important because you can practice so much with the robot and end up never using what you trained in the game. That's because the setting was not good. For example, the settings for forehand drive and loop should be different. For the forehand drive, the ball should be relatively low with 1 or 2 out of 10 top spin and should land about the third section of the table. For the forehand loop, most of the things remain the same. The height of the ball should be 4 to 6 inches higher as if there is another net on top of the net and a little longer than the drive. So it's easier for you to loop so that the ball is at the top of the bounce when you contact the ball to loop. Knowing these specific settings to make the feeding like coaches will first give you a good start. If you comment the things that you want to know how to set up for specific drills, I'll be more than glad to help you out. Once you have the right setup for the ball, you need to consider the tempo of the ball. One thing that you also need to know is whether you want to train your technique or rallying. You want the robot to feed one at a time if you want to focus on one technique. Between each feed, give some time so you can think about what went right or wrong and what to change and to get ready for the next ball. However, the length of the feeding intervals are totally up to you. And if you want to train as if you're rallying, the tempo of the feeding is very important. Look up any video of the training that you want to do, whether it be drive or loop. Try to find a similar tempo on the robot. Obviously, if you're looking at the national level players, their speed could be too fast, so you may need to slow down. But knowing the tempo of the actual rallies will allow you to minimize the dissimilarity between rallying against humans and robots. Tempo or the rhythm in the table tennis is very important, so you want to make sure that you have appropriate tempo when you are training with robots. Although these robots are advanced and made to feed the ball identically, still there are some variables such as each ball being different shapes or some dust here and there that will make little difference on each feeding. This means even though you set it up to feed at one place, you still need to move every time to adjust. Like I explained in another lesson about the rhythm of our body and the ball. While rallying, there are five phases of the body. 1. Neutral position. 
Two, prepare your swing. Three, wait for the perfect timing or the contact point. Four, swing to contact. Five, recovery. And this cycle repeats. Two happens when the robots shoot the ball, not when the ball lands on the table. And the preparation includes positioning, which means adjusting your feet according to the ball. If you just stand in one place and not get ready to move for each ball, your swing can become inconsistent, thus defeating one of the purpose of training, the consistency, which I always emphasize. So, be ready to move. 3. Do not try to learn new techniques. When you use the robot, you should either work on your footwork and cardio or on a technique that you already know or understand and want to improve and get the feeling of it. If you train for the techniques that you don't have ample knowledge on, you may end up building bad habits which will be hard to break when you actually want to learn the proper stroke. So if you really want to try out new techniques, it's all up to you. But try to have a coach while you train with the robot or spend some good time to actually understand the technique first before you try out. Number 4. You're not a robot. Sets and breaks. Unlike playing against humans, these robots never get tired. So they will keep feeding you and you may get tired before the robot does. So, whether it be like 1 minute training then 30 seconds break or 20 balls then 30 seconds break, make sure to get some breaks especially when you are performing intense shots such as loop or smash. Doing more when your muscle is at the limit may affect how you swing and may lead to injuries and worsen your form. Number 5. Target. To stay focused and to improve your shots, you need to set up a target. Here I put a tumbler because I really like the sound it makes when I hit. It's so satisfying, like ringing a bell. You can set up anything that makes a sound or even a picture of someone you hate is fine. Or a simple paper would work too. Personally, I like a target that makes sound. It gives me feedback. So, how does putting a target improve your shots? For example, if you're training on your forehand drive, as long as your swing is correct, like straight reads, proper stance, and so on, you can tell that you're hitting the ball too early if the ball goes to the left of your target, or too late if it went to the right side of the target. Thus, you can find where the right contact point is by self-correcting from previous shots. So the target is not only fun to hit, but also gives you a chance to correct yourself without a coach. Learning the right contact point according to the target is essential to have consistency on your shots. Otherwise, you may just hit the balls and not think about the exact placement nor consistency. And you may not know if you're doing it right. There are more things that you may want to know when you're training with robots. And there are many more things that I want to share. But personally, I think these are the basic things. It's so important to get the most out of your bot training. Thank you so much for watching this video. And I hope this was helpful to all of you. If it was helpful, don't forget to subscribe and like. And ask me any questions you have regarding the robot training in the comments.